Hello everyone, uh, thank you for your presence. So we will talk about the state of platform security in NixOS. So for the past year, we have been working on multiple features that were, that were implemented, presented in multiple blog posts uh, from um, the systemd community and other communities. And we'd like to present um, what can you actually use today on NixOS uh, regarding these features. So the idea is first maybe for some of you are not very uh, accommodated to what is NixOS, or you might have heard about what is this weird NixOS thing, explain you why is it designed this way, and what does it enable us to do, um, so why do we care about that. Then we will explain, um, we will focus on Secure Boot and TPM2 in the context of, um, I would say, user-owned keys, so not really vendor-controlled keys, vendor operating systems, so you can run Secure Boot on your own laptop, own your own keys, and design your own threat model adventure. Um, and then image-based NixOS, which is a use case for appliances and maybe more in the future, which will be presented by Niklas. Um, so let's get with the, I would say, similarities with other distros. So it's a standard system-based uh, Linux system. So we have, we use systemd in um, and we are, um, we heavily use systemd in dual operating system. And the difference are very big. So first thing is we break a compatibility with the file system hierarchy standard, so people don't find their usual binaries. The philosophy is that every binary, is, everything comes from the Nix store, which is like some sort of input address, content address, the details are a bit special, um, location, and um, everything is wrapped so that every binary, every library can see only what it needs to have. So that's another big philosophy. We'll try to restrict the view of everything, similar to how namespaces are ways to restrict what you can see. Um, and we have like regeneration. So when you reboot, um, we regenerate state. For example, users, when you remove a user, um, we will remove it from the password, password D that we will regenerate on every boot. And when you add it back, um, we will just revive the user, but we don't delete, delete the home directory and so on and so forth. So um, the key takeaway take here is because of this departure of the standard, we're able to run m multiple versions of the same software in different environments with very few friction. Um, and this is one thing that people love a lot and one thing that makes our life as developers much easier. Um, as a consequence of that design, every time you change your system, we basically just add a few things in the next store and we sprinkle some Simlix somewhere in the system. Um, so NixOS as an operating system is really this data of a Simlink containing all the information about your system, how do you regenerate the users that were contained in that particular snapshot of the system, and so on and so forth. And so booting in another system in our parlance is just selecting a new Simlink or a preview symlink. So rollbacks are just selecting a different symlink in the bootloader. Uh, that's why we have this generation system where in our bootloaders you can see a bunch of generations um, that are just selecting a different symlink. So again, NixOS philosophy, we restrict everything. We try, so every builds in Nix are done in a sandbox where we only expose the dependencies that were declared in the expression of that set package. So a package cannot ask for something we didn't declare, cannot access to the network, uh, except if it declares the hash of the contents it want, they want to download over the network. Um, and this minimalism extends to hardened systemd services that we try to ship in our distribution by default. Um, and Things even like things like slash bin slash bash doesn't exist on NixOS. So every time you run a random script on internet that someone builds, um, it just doesn't work because we are very strict on, on, on what do we keep in the system. So that's what is NixOS basically and what you should expect. And we will see how those design decisions uh, trickle down to the secure boot implementation. Um, so very quickly for I guess in this conference, everyone is mostly used to what is secure boot, but it, compared to measure boot, it controls um, who, e uh, who is allowed to run software on your computer. You sign binaries, and if the signature is allowed um, using some public key infrastructure, the binary can be loaded. Um, so with the UKI model um, proposed by systemd, 
the idea is that you bundle kernels and initerity in pro, uh, together for protection, and you sign the whole thing. Uh, the problem is because we have this generation system, uh, if we synthesize a UKI for every generation, well, you need 10 gigabyte ESP if you want to hold more than 100 generation. Um, so uh, we decided to implement differently things. So first, we needed to build a new stub, so this component in systemd that, that loads the kernel and in ETRD in its own memory space. Um, we re-implemented in Rust so that we can fix or explore how to do it differently. And we have tools to populate uh, slash boot in the same manner as boot control does, uh, with a little twist. And it's very Nixos integrated. But the core tooling are fairly generic, so you can use it for everything. Um, and the idea is to say, OK, um, so to, to recover the same protection properties, and at the same time, um, fix the problem of um, the disk space, we just denormalize the kernel and initer the into flat files on, in, the boot, uh, in the boot partition. But the stops, when it loads the kernel and, in, in, and the initer it will fetch in its own memory space the hashes, the expected hashes of the kernel and the initer and validate them when you load them. Um, so it creates what we call partial kernel images, which we include in there only the common line and the stop code. So the kernel and initerity are not in that image. Um, and this is, basically, this is basically the idea behind the, the, the design. So the non-unified, non-kernel UKI, <laughs> which contains only kernel command line OS release and some other stuff, will validate kernel and initerity in your ESP and check hashes, so SHA-256 or whatever you want, from its own binary, which and, and the whole thing is signed. Um, so of course, it's not an upstream blessed solution. And so we went to systemd, and they suggested us that we could use systemd boot add-ons, which is, which are just UEFI binaries that cannot run, but we can still, we can still verify the signatures because they're P binaries. Um, so we have some. Oh, there's still the placeholder here. <laughs> <coughs> We have, um, we wanted to work on making it easier to, to do our use case. Uh, so the idea is to just make it possible to load initerities. We wanted to make possible to load kernels, but apparently we're not, it's not a good idea. So we will just change the idea. We will store UKI with no initerity, no command line, and have command line and initerity as add-ons. And then we will use the loader.conf to mix and match add-ons to replicate the lens booty feature. The only difference we have with that model is that we can mix and match kernels and initerities that were not meant together. So I would say it's a minor security problem, like it depends on your threat model, but shouldn't change too much if you are using measure boot on the top of that. And then some question that we always have is shim. So shim isn't supported uh, because we encourage a lot of people to use, um, to hold uh, their own keys and people are happy of holding their own keys. It's like an opportunity to visit things like how do, you, um, how do you secure your own secure boot keys? Where do you store it? How do you manage multiple machines with secure boot keys, etc., etc.? Um, so it's a lot of fun for them. Um, but sometimes we, would we have some people who would like to use default secure boot with Microsoft keys. Um, but it's a low priority, but our stub can support it. Like it's not uh, very hard. And then TPM2 NixOS, there is nothing much to say because uh, systemd does the heavy lifting and there is no special integration in, Linux, in NixOS. Uh, you can use systemd Krypton roll, systemd measure, systemd PC lock, and it just works. Um, in the future, what we still would like to have is nice way in the installers, in the graphical installer, to suggest to the user uh, to enable the TPM2, to enroll the, their, their disk and so on and so forth, so we can raise the security levels for free um, while we have, I would say, tech-savvy users that are already using, testing those tools for us. Um, and so now, I will leave it to Niklas. Thank you, thank you. <clears throat> yeah, I'll speak a little bit about image-based NixOS. Um, first, I'll speak about why we want to build images, then how we build images, and then how we secure these images. So. In general, we focus on platform security for all Nixus users. So Lanza Bolt is something designed for all, for all, all Nixus users um, that use the normal Nixus stuff. 
Um, but then we realized also the image-based mechanisms unlock new security, security features that we really want, but we cannot offer them by default to everyone because it would break how Nixos generally works. So, um, yeah. We, we seek especially, especially the immutability property of the images and also the general minimization feature. So Ryan explained the file-based generation mechanism and uh, for image-based we want to move to a partition-based generation mechanism. Um, we realize that the file-based mechanism is not strictly required. There's nothing that forces us to use it. Um, so we can also just create one Nick store partition for a generation at build time. And then this generation is not determined by the init parameter on the command line, but instead by the partition label in the init RD. Um, and this, this stuff doesn't require Nix tools at runtime at all. You can just use uh, the normal systemd stuff and then uh, do uh, updates, for example, with sysupdate. In general, Nixos stays close to upstream, or at least we try to, um, including systemd. So we had all the tools in place, but for things to work well in Nixos, we need some extra abstractions in general. So we need wiring. Uh, so that stuff feels natural and seamless. Uh, but we try to keep these abstractions lightweight so that they feel like the upstream stuff, but just use the next syntax. And um, the three tools we identified that we needed were first Repart to build images, and then the UKI5 for traditional UKIs. And these are unlike the UKIs, the non-unified UKIs that Ryan described. And then also sysupdate for system updates. And this is what uh, a repart config looks like. It'll seem very familiar, especially the repart config specific thing down there. Um, but we can also just declare contents in this partition and then just you know, let repart do its job. So this is for an ESP, very simple, and then for a Nix store. So we can tell it with store pass to link into the image. And then we can also tell it remove the Nix store prefix so then you can just mount it under slash Nix slash store. And then the repart config just has this. Yeah. This is a sysupdate config, same deal. I think for everyone that has written sysupdate configs, it'll, it'll look mostly familiar. It's not too, too different. Then one big question is why don't we just use make OZ? And the image builder we, we've written uses repart directly. And make OZ would break, break our developer flow in, I think, a, a pretty major way. Because right now, everything you build, you just call nix build, and then it builds the stuff. And in the past, at least, we couldn't use MacOZ from the Nix sandbox. I think now maybe we can, so that's something we could revisit. But in general, I don't think we need many of the abstractions that MacOZ offers. We can just use the stuff we already have in NixOS. Long term, however, we would like to see NixOS support in MacOZ so that the systemd maintainers can also test Nix at NixOS. That'd be fun. Yeah. On to securing the image. Because everything in the OS tree can be built from Nixstore, so this works just like Hermetic User, basically, um, protecting just this Nixstore means that we protect the entire user space file tree. And um, DM Verity is the best choice here. It gives the highest level of assurance, and this is why we're doing it. However, it's only possible in image-based systems. This is an example of, let's say, my favorite partition layer for uh, an image-based Nixos. Uh, we start with the ESP, and, and the stuff on the ESP is protected by Secureboot. And then we have the A and B set of the Nixstore with the Verity hash partition first and then the Verity data partition. These are protected by DM Verity. And then at the end, we have um, a persistent partition. This could be var, this could be anything else. It doesn't really matter. And this is protected by DM Crypt or also, if you would like, DM Integrity. Um, and only the first three partitions are in the original image, and the rest is then created by Repod on first boot. We we have two options currently to mount the Nix store. First is, um, or to set up the, the DM device for, for the Verity protected um, partition. We can use the Nix store Verity setup generation that I've written. Um, that does essentially exactly the same as the Verity setup generator from systemd, but however, it checks for a store hash kernel command line instead of the user hash or root hash. Um, we figured out that mounting the Nix store on the user makes all the other systemd tools happy. Um, so that's kind of the way I like to go, that's just simple. And then we just bind mount the um, bind mount user slash user slash nix slash store to nix store, and then everything in Nixos works, and systemd stuff is also happy. Yeah, so overall, we have um, a nix store protected by DM Verity, or at least that's possible, you can do that, it's not by default. We've signed UKIs for secure boot, and the image builder we have can also do offline signing. Um, we have TPM2 support, we don't really do much ourselves, it all just works from upstream. Uh, we can do updates via sysupdate, and in the future we'd also like to see boot counting, which is not a super. Yeah, sorry? It's a great question. This is old, 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 old. You know the old. Surprise, surprise. Yeah. Uh, 
surprise question. <laughs> An almost quick question. So the generator runs in the int RD uh, and mounts it so that the actual user space comes up with user mounted? Yeah. Or, okay. Yeah. But uh, what precisely does it do again? Like it does exactly the same, but it mounts it in this def mapper nix minus store instead of def mapper user. Just a renaming of user to nix store. Basically, yeah. Okay, so like I mean, just changing the name, you we, you can send us this patch that allows this, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I'm, oh, I'm, 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 <laughs> I'm I'm fully aware. It's mostly it's mostly superfluous, which I've realized uh, now mostly after I've written the slides. Uh, because uh, the the problem was uh, supporting. NixOS in MQSI was that uh, NixOS wasn't very happy to provide uh, FHS layout. But yeah. it sounds like with, with a generator like this in the inter D, this, this could be solved. Maybe. Let's maybe uh, answer this question later. I'll finish up. I'm almost done, and then we can go into bigger discussions. Okay. Right. About boot counting has already a PR. It has a PR, which was retracted. But yeah, we're, we're, we're close. <laughs> Okay, but important to note is also none of this is enabled by default. You can opt into it. You can build um, your own distro, essentially, with, with the stuff we've built. But it's not by default. You can't just download and install it and you get this. So the conclusion is uh, Nix is kind of weird, but actually not so much. Kind of in the end, it's all mostly kind of the same. We use systemd. We use the same abstractions. It's all just Linux in the end. Um, we made SecureBoot available to the generous Nixos pop general Nixos population via Lanzabote, and um, we, I think, more and more turned Nixos also into an image building framework, kind of like Yocto, where you can just build your own images. And we have achieved a large part, if not the biggest part, of the. It's okay, it's okay. Okay, uh, of the of the image based vision, I think that has been, you know, presented in many blog posts. Yeah, and that's it. Thank you. I start. Is your DM Verity thingy signed DM Verity or not? So you could do it, but right now th cool. my my favorite approach is just just put it in the command line, kernel command line, and sign it via uh, system. Uh, but then you would. cannot write uh, code integrity policies with it. <laughs> Check my next but talk. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, question, <laughs> question, question, question. Okay, Forget about Luca. that. Uh, <laughs> Okay, uh, when will do we be able to have uh, Nextor that's verified with DM Verity, but it's also encrypted, so you that, can do that well, you decrypt it with uh, well, integra fully integrated, uh, built a fully integrated image that's encrypted and decrypted during boot time. But it's, it's isn't this just adding encrypt directive to repart? <laughs> If that's so, that's great. So you could you, you could use dmcrypt and just have an encrypted yeah. uh, encrypted uh, next door, but then you lack authenticity, right? So you need to layer DM integrity on top, yeah. and that's I think not supported by Repart, but that's in, like that's doable. It's a Repart problem. Okay, cool. I don't think we do DM integrity in Repart. No, we do. I don't think we do. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is, like, uh, um, what are you actually looking for? Like immutability. DM Verity is immutability. DM integrity is not about that's mutable, right? So if you want DM crypt and DM Verity combined, we do not offer this. Um, I think we should. Um, there are many use cases for things like configuration management, right? Like so that you can deploy signed and encrypted images with whatever configuration you have on the systems. Like systemd config basically wants this. Okay. Um, but uh, yeah, we should just do it. It shouldn't be too hard. So to there add. we go. Sounds good. It was another. Yes. So um, if you have like two Nix stores separate on two partitions, um, would it maybe make sense to? I, I mean, that's a lot of duplication probably between two generations, right? We because we always have to keep the full store. And do you think it could be a viable solution to have something like an? base store in another partition and then just two overlays on top of that maybe you keep a certain baseline of packages you keep across or have you had any thoughts about this already you could do that uh, but then you you kind of give up on the nice steam verity protection properties right yeah i mean you could also have a read only overlay and then protect that right yeah this is, I, this is i guess a philosophical question yeah. um what kind of security model you prefer yeah, yeah. But certainly doable, and I think with the, um, 
more exciting Linux features that come up, it's, it's more and more interesting. Yeah. So some people hate me, but there was a talk about Compose FS. <laughs> yeah. Any other questions? Um, given I told the two previous speakers, um, I'll tell you the same thing. Um, if you want to parameterize your initial D or user space, use credentials. I mean, I told you this already yesterday at dinner, but yeah. um, yes, credentials are the way to go. Um, any other question, comments for the NixOS folks? Going once, going twice. Well, thank you. <laughs>